one thing pops up all the time and I'm taking a look at one of your safes. And whenever somebody asks for help, I find that the majority of people are okay with tactics. Right? They make decent tactics, but they make really bad decisions when it comes to signing players. And on today's show, I'm going to show you a method that I use to quickly ascertain the right kind of players for your team. On top of that, I'm going to share with you some really important attributes that you need to consider or traits that you might want to look at when you're thinking of signing that player to play in your team. First up, let me apologize. I know some of you are looking forward to video guides that I've done. I haven't been able to get any out in the last couple of weeks. That's because I've had priorities at home that need to be addressed and I hope you do understand. On today's show, I'm going to focus on something that is very, very specific. I'm going to use a tool to help me analyze someone's safe. Here, I've got a safe of someone who's managing in League 2. It's not doing too badly. I mean, like, you know, they, they sh this shows uh, that the side is pretty well placed for a promotion push. But then when we look at his results so far this season, okay, look, this is a bit dodgy, right? I mean, like, the numbers, he got off to a good start and then after that fell apart. Then... What I like to do is I like to come inside here and then pick a random game. Um, let's pick one game here, Colchester. Who has he been using in defense? Baudry and Brennan, Tomlinson and Lavinia. Then he's got this player as a DM. Now here, this is a very basic mistake I see people making. Now you've picked somebody who's going to be a holding midfielder, right? Now if you look at, if you come in here, it will tell you that this player plays well in these positions, but defensive midfielder isn't any one of them. Deep line playmaker, you can create some stuff like you can pass. He's got visions, he's got decisions. He might be able to play some balls out. But, you know, in terms of his ability to win the ball, right, can he read the game and win the ball? Anticipation and concentration are really weak. How do you know these are really weak? You come into the squad planning, you come inside here, you go to comparison, look at your midfielders, look at the mental attributes for midfielders and see where he stacks up. The average is about, I would say that the average is about 10, right? Because 9.5 is below average. Remember numbers in the game, you know, averages, the more players you have in your squad, it pulls the average down. You might have two players who are 12, but the rest of the team could be seven. Then the average is lower. So yeah, you want to aim for as close to the best as possible. So it's going to be 10. Now, 10 would be the lowest for anticipation. And then the concentration is around 10 again, right? 9 would be below average. So you would want something that's higher than that. So in terms of anticipation and concentration, the ability to read the game, this is poor. And then when we look at defenders, we use the same, same approach as well in terms of anticipation and concentration. Why is it so important? If you're playing any kind of a tactic where you want players to try and win the ball, you don't want to wait until they have to tackle. You want them to be smart enough to realize where they have to be. So mental attributes are really important in the game. Focusing immediately on technical attributes is not the way to play this game. Technical attributes are needed when they finally have to tackle. But what's the point of having to tackle? If you can, if you know where the ball is going to be, you can beat the player to it and you don't have to commit a tackle. In fact, if I were to look at this player again, I will probably not use him in any team that I'm managing unless I have players that can actually uh, do the ball winning around him. Aggression is a really important attribute in the game. So if you want to play some kind of aggressive system, you want to try and win the ball somewhere in the pitch and you're depending on midfielders to win that ball, aggression, anticipation, concentration, these are important attributes that you need for your team. So then I like to look at tactics and say, okay, so what, what have we got in this tactic? Now, Whenever I look at role, playing a formation, now we're playing a 4-3-3 three, three here, then it's a simple thing. We're playing a mid-block, so we want to win the ball here in the midfield and then launch quick counters. That means these players need to tackle. These players need to do some hard work. These players need aggression. The second thing you want to do when you're playing this kind of a game is consistency. You want to try and identify the 11 players you want playing in your tactical system and you stick to it. Uh, as far as possible. Here we've got Colchester, another game that's been played. He's gone with Gunning, Williams, uh, McCurrican in midfield, and then he, he's gone with the same two defenders most of the time, which is a good sign. But here, you got Charlie Austin. He's a striker. Now, he's got acceleration of six and agility of nine. This is a case of somebody deciding, hey, you know what? I'm going to sign a player who's going to play his back 
to go locationally, link play up, and then uh, we'll try and score some goals. Then we look at the tactic. Does this tactic, the tactic doesn't play to that player's suits. Because you've chosen an advance forward. This guy's the focal point of attack. He needs to go attacking. You've got a tactic that's played as a mid-block. So you generally want somebody here who's fast, can get away and try and score goals. Instead, uh, we've got uh, players like Charlie Austin in the side. Now, this means that when you're setting a tactic up like this, you need to have players here who can win the ball. They need aggression. They need you to, they need to do some work. Um, and generally, I find that for quite a few of these players, they don't really have aggression. This is a player that maybe all we're going to ask from this player is to get forward and do something. He's got the trick gets forward whenever possible. So yeah, maybe play him as the AP. Then this player who's playing, uh, his name is uh, Williams. Now, he could be a box-to-box -box midfielder, but look at his lack of aggression. Now, I personally don't think uh, you, we should look at players with low aggression in center in the center of the park. When you are playing a mid-block, you want these players to try and win the ball for you. So aggression becomes important. Gunning, he's got good aggression, but his reading of the game is terrible. Anticipation, concentration, he could get into trouble more often than not. And, you know, he's um, he doesn't really... Um, perform the task of a defensive midfielder really well. So when you come into a safe like this, you've got to ask yourself a question. What are the key attributes that I require? The key attributes you require for any role that is required to do defensive work, anticipation, concentration, positioning. You need these players to know what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to read the game. Some footballing intelligence is required. So if you've got a if you have decided to play a mid-block, your midfielders are the ones who are going to try and win the ball. If your defenders are the ones trying to win the ball, the game, it's too late. You know, you, you're bound to get in trouble. So what you really want is to make sure that this core group has those kind of attributes. The thing is, if you don't have any central midfielders with aggression, you can't even consider changing roles. Like, the ball-winning midfielder role is a very good role in midfield. But if the player lacks aggression, anticipation, and concentration, all you have is a player that you've told to go try and win the ball. But, you know, what's the point if he doesn't know where to go? I think some of you are familiar with my tool, uh, Dr. Jit, right? So what I have is got a filter. I've set it up and then I extract all these into a tool and I try to analyze my players. So what I'm going to do is we've got um, players here and uh, what we have done is we have included all the Swindon players. So I'm going to take a look at your defenders right, your deep DMs and your MCs, right? So, no, let's just focus on defenders first. All right, so if you've got your defenders all set up, what I want to do is I want to find out how they stack against the rest of the league. It's pretty easy. All you got to do is make sure, you, make sure you select one of these players and then control A. That highlights the whole window. Then scroll down to the bottom. This is important. You got to scroll. And then once you hit the bottom, scroll back up again, right? Get back up again and then hit control P. Export the file, save it as a web page, and then import the file into this tool. What I'm going to do right now is I've come in here and I've, uh, you know, I've removed some of the fields already. And I want to know how your players stack up against the rest of the league. So this tool is pretty straightforward. It's got a defensive action saw, a chance creation saw, and a scoring score. Essentially, I take defensive actions. I've got a weight because this is a unique tool because I use my own formulas here. Um, we've taken interceptions per 19 and given them an extra weight, meaning it's more important because this is a reflection of a player's intelligence. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sort these out by defensive action. What we want to do is we want to know where our players lie. Our two defenders in this team are Clayton and Baudry and Brennan as uh, most of the time when you're playing your game. So easily done. We can come in here. We know that the score is 6.493 is the top. And right at the bottom, it's about two, one point something to about two. So we sort this, we remove this, and then we come in here. And then if I'm looking for your players, say we got Baudry here. He's one of your players. His ranking is 4.477. The highest is about six. The lowest is about two. He's about near the middle. But if I'm looking at his, why is he so far down the middle? Look at his interceptions, only 2.99. Now there are players here with five higher interceptions as defenders. As a central defender, the interception rate is pretty low. His reading of the game isn't very good, right? Now, if I come back inside here and I look at this player, his anticipation, his concentration is 11, he's 11, his positioning is 10, his acceleration, his agility is okay. I mean, 
he is performing well, I would try and get players with higher acceleration, at least 10. Uh, his numbers are closer to the mid-tier. Let's compare him to somebody else in your team. Because we've got quite a few defenders in your team, the question is, who do you use most of the time? Now we've got here Tom Clayton. Coming in here is very important to try and see where he's been playing for most of the season. Now, most of the season, he's been using him as a ball-playing defender. Now again, his attributes are not bad, right? His jumping reach is a bit poor. Now we will come in here and look at the tool again. He isn't that bad. I mean, his interceptions are pretty solid, but he doesn't win. He doesn't win a lot of hitters. This is his weakness in the game. While he is okay at reading the game, as a defender, he's expected to win a lot of hitters. This 54% ratio in tells me that his score is pretty low at 3.372. While he reads the game really well, he never wins enough headers to help this team out. So you can't really be playing him as a ball-playing defender. Because he can read the game well, you should push him into the DM tier, which where he's going to do a lot, fair lot better, where you know winning the headers is, isn't nearly as important as breaking up play. So when I'm looking at players in a team now, it's pretty evident here that this is a pretty well-rounded player. He can play in the defensive third but i would definitely use him as one of these roles because here it tells us that how his uh, attributes line up as a ball winning midfielder is solid as a defensive midfielder is solid uh he may not have, be fantastic at passing the ball out but i would put him here in a heartbeat right so you want to play clayton in the center at all times defensively we've got other players like baudry now another thing that we can do once again we can come inside here Matteo Brodry, he's not very fast. Anticipation and concentration isn't that bad. He becomes another defender. Finally, we've got Brennan in your squad. Brennan is another player that is in your team. How does he stack up? You've taken him on loan. Interceptions, not very good. I mean, he does win a few hitters. It's about 74%. Not fantastic. But, you know, in terms of defending in your back line, this is a pretty decent player. Uh, he rates... Uh, in the middle third of uh, of the league in terms of his uh you know his score his contributions as a defender we can always find out right he's 4.5 right this is the top let me go down this is where kiaran ranks uh compared to the rest of uh the players in the league now this is actually this tells me what the bar should be if i was going to win the title my players are going to be in the top five it becomes very important whenever somebody creates a tactic like you use the cn attacking playmaker when a pl player like that doesn't even play for your team so it's much more easier for me to use someone like a cm on attack so i probably end up playing kane here on attack because he's got gets forward whenever possible he's got decent attributes you know to move forward and you want to keep things as simple as possible you had an inverter winger here i probably change it to a winger instead of asking for trouble on this flank we keep it simple it's very important to go into the game to understand what your players can do and what they can't do. Keep it simple. Like, if you're going to play a winger here or an inverter winger, get a player who's got acceleration and crossing. If you got a, you want to use an advanced forward here, important attribute that you want to start with is acceleration. That's the very first attribute you look at. Because if you're playing a mid-block, that player's got to get away. If you can't get away, what's the point of getting the play into the squad because acceleration becomes very, very important. Then if he can get away, then what's the second attribute that he needs? First touch. Because if he's going to receive the ball and he's running really fast, if he has a decent first touch, like nine, he can take the ball down under control. Then all you need to think about is finishing. So acceleration and first touch, finishing are the Three important attributes I'll start looking at, you know, then we got off the ball and the rest, but those can be average numbers at best. Here, at the end of the day, how you play is going to determine the kind of attributes you're looking for. This team doesn't have any players who've got high aggression in the center. I would change the tactic immediately and start playing high up the pitch. What's the point of defending if my players can't win haters in the area? So this is the biggest mistake I see people making. They look at their team. They think about things in terms of a meta. Like what's the best way to play? That's the wrong approach to take. You should take a look at your team and go, what's the best way for me to play this team? So you go out there and if your players can't defend against headers, why are you playing a mid-block?
If your team hasn't got fast strikers, why are you playing a mid block? So when you go out to sign players, keep just play it as simple as possible. Focus on the basics. That's the easiest way to play this game. You know, there are plenty of tools in this game. Like I've got one, you know, it might confuse you. But if you can keep things simple, you could use Neymar as a defender and still win titles. It's not that hard. If you want to use a weak player in a specific position, then ask yourself a very simple question. What is he there to do? Sometimes I've used players as Trequatistas in Panorama National South. Why? Because all I want from that player is to drop deep, hold on to the ball, and pass the ball. All you got to do is identify the very basic attributes that you need from your team to perform the role that you want them to do. So if you're playing a mid block, you want fast strikers. If you have a team of defenders who are not very good at winning balls in the air, you definitely don't want to play a mid block. You want to play high up the pitch because defending is not your strength. So create some kind of a strength in your team. It's not hard to do at any tier in this game. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please look me up when I'm live streaming and I'll try and help you guys out. And we've been known to stop my save and, you know, start a new one simply because somebody wanted a different take on a different formation. I hope you have a good time. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.